What is up? This is the Leafs Convo Podcast presented by Oak Ridge Ford. It is November 20th, 2019, a day that'll go down in infamy among Maple Leafs fans and the hockey world in general. The Maple Leafs have fired head coach Mike Babcock. Goodbye, Babs. Hate to see it go out like this, Mike, but what's done is done. Time to move on, I guess. How are you? It's funny because, uh, you know, the 22nd of November, not to compare Babcock's firing to the uh, Kennedy assassination, but you, you always remember where you, like the people of a certain generation remember where you were when, mm -hmm. and have to say that, you know, Lee fans will remember, you know, where they were when they heard this news. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, I mean, it's a little bit shocking. And I know that, like, you know, I've been somebody who has said even as recently as our last convo that I didn't think Babcock would be fired um, this season or unless they lost 10 or 12 in a mm -hmm. row and fell way behind. Yep. And uh, I had Kevin Allen on our, on our buzz cast this afternoon. And he basically agreed. He said, and a lot of other experts have said, you know, Dave Poulin on TSN and Bob McKenzie said it was a 50, 50 proposition. And Poulin said he thought hundred percent that Babcock would make it to the end of the season. So this is a decision that I think shows a little bit of the, what I think is the philosophical divide between Dubas and, and Babcock that has been, I think, ongoing since Dubas was hired as general manager. And you can buy into it. You can not buy into it. I know that Shanahan said that he thought that Kyle and Mike had a good working relationship. Well, that's all fine and good. I'm sure they did. But, you know, that doesn't mean that they agreed on how uh, the team should be playing and should be utilized. And we know that Babcock, in certain instances, had his favorites, had players that he played, no matter how bad they played, guys like Martin Marinson or Freddie Gauthier, who, by the way, was on the ice for th the three non-empty net, go non net goals last night in the loss to Vegas. Um, but he stuck to those principles. He's a very stubborn guy, believes what he believes in. He won a Stanley Cup. He got to a st couple Stanley Cup finals. Mm. He won two Olympic medals. He has every right to believe what he believes in, but it doesn't mean that it's right. And I think that the philosophical divide and the sign-off by Brendan Shanahan uh, were the things that led to Babcock being fired today. OG's oh, converts, where were you when you heard the news of Babcock's firings? Get at us in the comments section or on the community platform. I'd love to know. I was standing in the tower where they do the car deals at Oak Ridge Ford. Michael, thanks to you, I got the news. I can't say it's good news. I'm not exactly happy with it. Is this a situation where the team gave up on Mike Babcock? If it's as crazy and as difficult as that is to comprehend, it's a possibility. Or mm -hmm. is this, does this come down to right now this team needs a change in philosophy? The players were trying. It's not, it wasn't working under Babcock. Bring in Sheldon Keefe. Let's see what he can do. Because clearly we know that Kyle Dubas' long-term viability as general manager in Toronto is tied to the success of the head coach that he's just appointed. Well, I don't know if it came down. Based on what Shanahan said, it was the last couple weeks, which coincides with you know, the, the beginning of the slide, the six game losing streak, five in regulation. If you look at the standings right now, there's still only two points out of a wild card yeah, spot. And we, more than that too, though, right? Right, right. Four, four, four points out of, out of third place. So, but, but it was more than that because we know that it came pretty close to Babcock being fired in the off season. They ended up ironically. And I said this during the, during the summer when they relieved Jim Hiller and they, uh, lost DJ Smith to Ottawa and brought in McFarland and Dave Haxtell. This is the same thing that happened with Randy Carlisle the year that he was fired. They brought in new assistants, Horacek and Steve Spot, and then Carlisle was fired. I thought there was a possibility that even Hax Haxtell would have been the interim coach here because I'm not sure if they wanted to uh, you know sort of disturb Sheldon Keep or whether they wanted to put him into this situation where they're going to be mostly on the road for the next month. Yeah. It's going to be a, a difficult difficult scenario, but mm -hmm. I mean, you're you're right. Dubis and and Keef are tied together. Keef um, you know, thinks the same type of game and speaks the same language as Dubis and we'll see whether um, that you know that will make 
that'll tra transmit to a, a better playing uh, performance by the Leafs. I think it will in some, in some aspects because this team was not, and I've said this for a while, this team was not built to play Mike Babcock hockey. He, he ta constantly talked about heavy hockey, and this team is the furthest away from heavy hockey that you uh, can get. Okay. So the type of hockey that Sheldon Keefe wants to enact, is that the type of hockey that is going to be top three, top four among the 31 teams in the NHL? How does his game make the Leafs that much better than a league that is improving right along with it? Well, from what – and what I've observed watching the Marlies for years and uh, listening to people who would either are friendly or observed Sheldon Keefe and the way he coaches in the OHL with Sault yeah. Ste. Marie or with the Marlies, he is an attack oriented coach. And this is based on their speed and skill should be an attack oriented team. Babcock was more possession. And, you know, I, I think at some points sort of positional and passive, and I, I don't think that, that that works. Now, you know, I think he also wanted to play, again, that heavy, that heavy style. And he didn't have big players, big wingers to, you know, create chances. I mean, he relied on, uh, on the skill of this team, the superior skill of this team. And obviously with Marner out and Kerfoot out and Moore out, you know, a couple injuries. Um, you know, last night they played, I think, a very conservative, close to the vest game and played fairly well at points where Spezza gets a goal and they, they work hard to get that tying goal. And then 42 seconds later, Tyson Berry makes a defensive error and that all that's flushed down the toilet. So I think Keith will implement that attack style and you could see some minor changes. I, I, I openly questioned whether some Marley players who have not gotten a chance in the NHL because of he, them not fitting what Mike Babcock thinks is the right fit for his team, guys like Jeremy Bracco, whether they will get a chance now under Sheldon Keefe. Mm -hmm. Wow. What kind of player was Sheldon Keefe? Was he a knuckle dragger? He was a fighter, wasn't he? No. And, uh, I mean, he was a tougher player, but I, I don't – I mean, his NHL career was so brief yeah. that I can't really – I know he was with Tampa, but, yeah, I mean, he, he gives the impression off based on, you know, interviewing him and talking to him that he, he was a tougher player, but I, I don't really recall his career that much. Mm, interesting. OGs, Converse, what do you think? The Leafs combo continues. Nathan Jenner from Oak Ridge Ford. The 2020 models are rolling in, including the all-new redesigned Escape and Explorer. For a limited time, save big with Black Friday specials on all remaining in-stock 2019. Like a 2019 Ford Edge SEL all-wheel drive starting at $433 per month plus HST for a five-year lease with zero dollars down. Oak Ridge Ford, where a reputation gets you here and the trust keeps you coming back. For full details, visit oakridgeford.com. We have all sorts of Black Friday deals right now. If you're local, come talk to me. Huge cash up front off the purchase of pretty much every vehicle on the lot if it's new. You can at me inside the community section or get at me in the comments or at I am Norman James on Twitter. My email is norman.james at oakridgeford.com. So Brendan Shanahan goes all in on Kyle Dubas, Michael, clearly. Mm -hmm. um, chose Dubas over Lamorello, over Hunter, over the boomers, over the old guys. And uh, supporting this move to move Mike Babcock away from from 40 Bay to wherever the hell else he wants to go. And Sheldon Keefe's now the man. Um, so, I mean, it's on Dubas, it's on Keefe, but is it not on Shanahan more so, Mike? Well, I, I think that, you know, Shanahan brought in Babcock to provide stability and get them to a certain level. And obviously I think he wanted ideally for them, for him to lead them to a Stanley cup that didn't work out, but I think, you know, a couple hundred point seasons and them being, you know, at a certain level, even though they've, they've slumped recently. I think that's something that a few years ago was unthought of after missing the playoffs for as many years as they did. Now it's up to Sheldon Keefe to sort of take them to the next level. Um, I think, you know, obviously this is the, the heat is a little more on Shanahan, but Shanahan just got a new contract. So I don't think there's too much heat on him. He's well liked mm -hmm. and he's well respected. And I mean, the, now the, the focus shifts 
to Kyle Dubas. And I mean, Kyle Dubas has chosen his man. I think it was, we always knew that this eventually yeah. was going to be the direction. You know, it was a fait accompli that Sheldon Keefe would be the next head coach. And now he's got his coach and they implement the system that they implemented with uh, Sault Ste. Marie and with the Marlies, you know, hopefully it'll have the same success that it had with the Marlies, which ended up in a championship. Mm-hmm. So that, that, you know, we'll, we will see now the next, the next change or the next step here is if the players that this team, that, that Dubas has put together do not live up to the expectations, then you're going to see changes with the players. It may not happen for the remainder of the regular season because they're so tight up against the cap, yeah. but you could, you could see players being moved if they don't fit with what they're looking for. And that's that it's up to the players for them to play the system that Keefe and Dubas want them to play and be successful. And if they're not, they'll find other players that can. So cap restrictions, I guess, um, well, not theoretically, but practically restricts a whopper of a deal from being made to change the on ice complexion of the team. Well, it would have to be a sort of money out, money in scenario where, like, if you, you, you know, if you're open to moving Casper Kapanen or Andreas Janssen or mm. uh, William Nealander or somebody of that, somebody of that ilk, then, you know, you're, it would be somebody coming back that would be an, up an equivalent salary. Now, you know, I, we're, we heard the, the Tyson Berry uh, rumors that were discussed on Saturday from Elliot Friedman uh, on the Saturday ho- uh, headlines. Yeah. And that that has sort of gained traction, but the but the thing is, is that I think that this change is an, is sort of a fresh start for Barry here to see whether he can play the way he played in Colorado yeah. and be successful. He's he's likely not going to stay yeah. around. He's not he's a he's a he's a one year rental, but they want somebody with skill and they want and, and hey maybe they put Riley and Barry together and they play twenty five minutes a night and put other teams on their on their heels. That's possible. I don't think you would have ever seen that under Babcock. You might see it under under uh, Heath. Yeah, ingenuity, innovation, experimentation. If those are the things that Keith is going to bring to the job immediately, I'm all for it. I have nothing against Keith. I have nothing against Dubas. I'm pro them. I'm pro Maple Leafs over individual Leafs. It just kind of sucks the mm-hmm. way it went down for Mike Babcock because I, you know, the guy. He's a good guy. He's a classy guy. I mean, he's done well. He was brought to Toronto with the anticipation of taking the Leafs to great heights. They just couldn't get over the hump. Um, unfortunately, I think his stubbornness and his inability to, to change or his want to, lack of want to change compounded a lot of the problems that were happening with the Leafs on the ice. Do I think this is going to be the tonic, the cure-all? Not a chance. OG's Converts, I have a lot of questions for you. I want you guys to just light up the comment section, uh, the community platform as well. I have a feeling this is going to be big, and clearly the, the news is monstrous. And, uh, change, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a major, major shift for this organization and certainly the fan base too. Do you think, guys, that the Leafs are still a contender for the Stanley Cup this season with this change? It's not too late. But is this mm. Sheldon Keith being the guy now? Is is this all that it's going to take for this team to all of a sudden snap out of whatever the heck uh, has been holding it back? Uh, not only for this season, but uh, throughout the playoffs last year and really a lot of last season too. Is this what it's going to be now? Or do you feel like there are more dominoes to fall? There are more things that need to be changed so that Sheldon Keith you know, it's not only behind the bench and he has the support of the general manager, but he's actually got the kind of tools that he needs to uh, employ the strategy and employ the, the uh, concepts and what he envisions to make it happen for this Maple Leafs team. My, my concern is that Sh- Sheldon Keefe is just one man. He's got ideas, but the rest of the league is ready for what the Maple Leafs are going to bring. And certainly they're, they're ready for what they're bringing on the ice right now. If you're going to shift these guys around and change the strategy, is that going to be enough? Will this team ultimately at the end of the day realize no matter how they play, they need to be tougher. They need to be grittier. The speed and skill are great, but you're going to need that other component that this team didn't have under Mike Babcock and won't have under Sheldon Keefe until they make changes. Last word to you, Michael. Yeah, they play Arizona tomorrow night. 
Sheldon Keefe's first game as Leafs coach. Um, obviously, it'll be appointment television to watch them play against a team that's playing extremely well uh, defensively, especially. Um, you know, they're not. I mean, they're not going to get Marner back for at least another four or five weeks. They might get Kerfoot back. I, I agree with, with some of the things that I've heard uh, this afternoon saying you can expect Keith to probably play John Tavares and Austin Matthews over 20 minutes, something that would, that Babcock was sort of loath to do because he was always about balancing ice time, but you know, all hands on deck right now, this team needs to yeah. win. And, you know, for all the panic, this team is only two points out of a wild card spot. So yeah. I, I, maybe it was justified to fire Babcock now if they thought that the philosophical uh, differences were too much, but this season is far from over. Yeah. Right? By any means necessary right now, Mike, all hands on deck, as you've mentioned. If you've got to play some of the big stars, the heavyweights, the thoroughbreds, a lot of minutes to get results right now, that's great. Because in time when things level out and the team calms down and there's a uh, a sense of cohesion and harmony, then you can dial guys back and give other players a chance. But right now, um, in a lot of ways, Mike, I know they're two points out, but the season's on the line. They just, you know, are they really a wild card team? The season's on the line. And the season's going to be on the line for weeks and months to come. So, anyway, Mike, thanks a lot. I uh, wish you were on better terms, but the Leafs combo will always continue. Thank you very much, man.